What's up, everybody? JT Sports. I'm back to you guys with another summer round NFL mock draft. Before I begin, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more NFL videos and content. And let's get into this video. So I'm back to you guys with another 2019 NFL mock draft seven rounds. And this team I'm doing is the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Cincinnati Bengals start out 4-1. Many people thought. Myself, well, I didn't think this at all, but maybe the Cincinnati Bengals did a good decision in bringing back Marvin Lewis for another year. Well, that hit the fan. 4-1, people started getting injured. The defense started playing terrible, and everything just went south. They got rid of Marvin Lewis. They hired the L.A. Rams quarterback coach, Zach Taylor. Now, that's an interesting hire because... You don't really see a lot of positional coaches getting hired like that. Normally, you see the coordinators getting hired or the assistants and stuff like that. But we saw two position coaches, um, the linebacker coach for the Miami Dolphins get hired, and the L.A. Rams, who is now the Cincinnati Bengals head coach, Zach Taylor. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how this offense is going to look because I believe this whole hire was was behind this whole new Sean McVay movement. All these teams now, when they have a head coach in vacancy, they always want to try to find the next quote, quote, Sean McVay, which is the reason why the Arizona Cardinals hired Cliff Kingsbury. It's all about trying to find a new Sean McVay. Now, Zach Taylor, what I'm expecting this guy to do, I'm expecting this guy to have a lot of similar motions and formation and stuff like he did when he was on the LA Rams staff and Andy Dalton man this guy is on the thin leash and before I even get into this mock draft I'm just going to go ahead and address this I don't have the Cincinnati Bengals taking a quarterback this year and here's why next year's quarterback is going to be a lot more stacked a lot better it's so many good players so many good quarterbacks and next year's draft class the 2020 draft class so there's no reason to waste a pick on the quarterback this year when you already know Andy Dalton's going to be the guy. If you're not sold on Andy Dalton at this point, I, I mean, you can let him walk away, be a free agent, trade him, do whatever you have to do, and just draft another one next year. Or if this season, if he stinks it up, just put in Jeff Driscoll. He didn't do too bad. But I don't think quarterback is a huge priority. Now, let's get into their first round. So the first round, 11th overall, have them selecting the offensive tackle slash offensive guard. Cody Ford out of the University of Oklahoma. Yes, linebacker will be ideal here, but I already have Devin White and Devin Bush going somewhere else before this pick. So, off the tackle, offense guard Cody Ford would be a good fit here. The Cincinnati Bengals have already had him in on a pre draft workout. And this is the biggest need for the Cincinnati Bengals on the offensive side of the ball with right tackle Cody Glenn and. Left side, the left tackle position, Cody Ford, will be an ideal pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cody Ford, he started at right tackle last season for the University of Oklahoma. He was one of the best tackles in all of college football last year. He's a good run blocker, good pass blocker, and he could be a high caliber offense along with the Cincinnati Bengals. And what I love about Cody Ford is that he can play off the tackle and off in the guard. So he can switch positions wherever a team might need him to fill. Let's say this season they need him to play off in the tackle. Let's say next year they need him to play off in the guard due to injuries. He can move there and I think he'll be pretty good as well. He has the size to play both, has the speed to play both. And he's a, probably the best or the second to best Offensive lineman in his draft class behind Jawan Taylor. Some people say he's better than Jawan Taylor, however you want to put it. He's a beast. So in the second round, 42nd overall, having him selecting the cornerback, Justin Lane out of Michigan State. Now, the Bengals had one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. They re-signed DeQuez Denard back. They signed B.W. Webb, but I don't really look at him as anything legit. 
I think he's pretty average at best. I looked up pro football focus and he had an average grade on him. So I'm not really expecting anything big. And I'm not really going to expect him to be the second quarter corner on his team. So the Bengals need to add another cornerback alongside Denard, Justin Lane. He has good anticipation on routes. He understands receivers and their tendencies since he was a former wide receiver himself. He's very good in press coverage, and he's also very good at locating the ball and has very good length. So in the third round, 73rd overall, have Cincinnati Bengals taken one of my favorite players of this draft, linebacker, Rashawn Joseph out of the University of Florida. Now, the Bengals need two linebackers, and one of those linebackers has to fill the void of Vontez Burfecht, who was released and ended up signing with the Oakland Raiders. Now, Joseph plays his game with attitude, intensity, and that shows with his play on the field. I mean, this guy is very explosive and very physical, plays the game with an immense passion. He has a lot of potential, very good in coverage with the ability to improve a lot more and also the ability to be a very very good blitzer now according to nfl.com they asked the afc coach and the afc coach said and i quote joseph either has very impressive film to some teams or very bad film to some teams there's no middle ground but with a good defensive coach they could turn him into a very great player now Vashawn joseph should be a day one starter with the Cincinnati Bengals. I think he's going to be a pretty good player going in to the NFL. Now, in the fourth round, 111th overall, I have the Cincinnati Bengals taking Drew. And I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name, but Drew out of Oklahoma. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals need another offensive guard. Drew has good length and athleticism. He's 6'5", 305 pounds. He has very good footwork, which is the reason why he was one of the best offensive linemen in college football when it came to pull blocks or pulling. Um, This guy is very, very athletic for his size. I mean, this guy is 6'5", 305 pounds. He's also another guy who can play offensive tackle if need to. So Oklahoma, they had a lot of versatile guys on that offensive line, probably because that way that offense was set up and how they recruited players, basically. So he can also, another guy who can line up, play interior, or line up and play that outside tackle position. And he also will be, in my opinion, very, very effective if he's in a zone blocking scheme. I think that's where he will best be able to, you know, provide a quality impact on the offensive line and I think some of his best play will come if he goes to a team that runs a zone blocking scheme and I think that the LA Rams ran a zone blocking scheme if I'm not mistaken somebody let me know if I'm right about that down in the comment section below and I'm pretty sure if they ran that blocking scheme with the LA Rams Zach Taylor is going to run that same blocking scheme with the Cincinnati Bengals now in the fifth round 150th overall have Cincinnati Bengals taking edge rusher Jordan Bruff Brelford out of Oklahoma State. Now, the Bengals could use some added depth at the edge rush position. Brelford has a fast first step with a good punch and also can drop back in coverage as a linebacker. He is very effective against zone read offenses. His only downfall is that he is underweight at that edge rush position. He's only 241 pounds, doesn't have a lot of length. He also missed a lot of tackles during his 2018 campaign. Bradford would provide good depth and he Will probably be a solid backup in the NFL. In the sixth round, Jesus, they have a bunch of them. Sixth round, 184th overall, have them selecting a tight end, Josh Oliver, Oliver, excuse me, out of San Jose State. Now, Tyler Alford was brought back from free agency, but he's very unreliable as he will was very injury prone last year. He missed a lot of last season. I think he missed that entire season, if I'm not tripping. I think he did. I'm not sure. I think he had some kind of injury that kept him out of the starting lineup for some time. Now, Josh Oliver, he's not a very good blocker, but he is a very, very talented receiver tight end. He can also line up and play wide receiver as well. A lot of upside, can stretch the field vertically, has very good hands. This would be a pretty good pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I think they have been working out tight ends as well during this pre-draft process. Because Tyler Alfred, I mean, this guy has a bunch of injury problems going on. Very injury prone. And I don't think he will be playing in the NFL much longer if his injuries keep on piling up. 
So, in the sixth round, 200th overall, I have them selecting linebacker Jawan Young out of Marshall University. Now, he didn't have a lot of college production during his college career, but he has solid size. He also is very good in coverage and has a knack for getting to the ball. He could be a very good backup for a few years and maybe become a potential starter. The Cincinnati Bengals need another linebacker or another linebacker to compete for a starting spot. And this could be Jawan Young. Now, with the 212th overall pick in the sixth round, I have the Cincinnati Bengals taking wide receiver Alex Wesley out of North Colorado. Now, John Ross, the John Ross experiment at this point seems to be a failure, and I expect him to be traded either during the draft or somewhere during the NFL season before the trade deadline if his play doesn't improve. And he doesn't get traded during the NFL draft. Now, Alex Wesley is a very underrated receiver prospect due to his small school status. But he has great speed. He also ran a 4-4-5 at the NFL Combine. Has a track background. He also led his team in receiving yards the last two seasons. So if the Bengals decide to part ways with John Ross, he will be a good replacement. I mean, after all, he doesn't really have any huge shoes to fill because John Ross didn't really do anything spectacular. So really this could be an upgrade because John Ross is just a big, big disappointment. It reminds me a lot of Tavon Austin so far. Hasn't really lived up to the hype. I mean, at least Tavon Austin is able to have a little bit of production, but I mean, disappointment. Now, what this is about their third six-round pick? Holy Christ, how did they get so many six-round picks? 213th overall defensive tackle, Ed Alexander out of LSU. Now, the Bengals' defensive line is solid, but they could use some more depth there. Ed Alexander would be a good fit here, especially if the Bengals decide to run a 3-4 defense this year. He's also extremely athletic and has a fast get-off. Now, the sixth round, their last six-round pick. 215th overall, had them selecting wide receiver Jacoby Myers out of NC State. Nothing wrong with drafting another wide out because, I mean, it's a need because John Ross is, well, not good. And Jacoby Myers will provide solid depth at that wide out position. Now, with their last pick of this year's NFL draft, 225th overall in the seventh round, they have them selecting halfback Tony Pollard out of Memphis. Now, the Bengals release halfback Mark Walton. After three of us this offseason, they now will probably look to add another running back so they can have some more depth at that position or maybe look to bring some a couple of guys, maybe draft the guy, pick some guys off the street in free agency, bring them into training camp and see if somebody can make the roster as some more or excuse me, more running back depth or however you pronounce it now Pollard is a hidden gem in my opinion because this guy was hidden behind the shadows of Daryl Henderson. We already know how spectacular Daryl Henderson is, but Pollard in his own right is pretty doggone exposed. I mean, this guy averaged 7.1 yards per carry during his collegiate career. So this guy is nose knockoff. He's pretty solid as well. And this is it for my seven round mock draft for the Cincinnati Bengals. So you guys let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video and subscribe for more NFL content. And thanks for watching.